Well, thank you for all coming out tonight. Um, this is something that uh, two years ago, three years ago, I didn't ever envision doing this. I've done a fair bit of speaking on this subject. Uh, I was a dairy farmer in the Ripley area for 27 years. I still farm in that area. I just do not have cattle anymore. And uh, I'll make it quite clear. I have an option to lease on my home farm, a mistake that I dearly regret. Um, there is no, it's for the second phase of the Ripley Wind Farm. They haven't started construction yet. And uh, so we'll see how that's all gonna play out. I did not lease my other farm. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so it, it splits communities. It does stuff in communities that uh, I've seen personally. I did not know that there was any health effects. I was, uh, if you listen to Nikki Horton's speech, that was to me. And that was most of us in our area. Uh, we had no idea what these things do to human health and livestock, okay? And if they tell you that it doesn't affect, uh, they are wrong. Uh, the first people that will move in are the marketers. They know absolutely nothing about the construction of these turbines nothing about the engineering of them, <clears throat> nothing about the side effects. And once the marketers are done, they're gone, you won't see them again. <coughs> Believe me, that's what's happened in our area. You do not see these guys again. Just educate yourself. As Nikki said, they didn't do their homework, we didn't do our homework in our area either. We have 38 turbines, and uh, this presentation, some of it is put together with Magna Havis. I do a lot of work with Magna Havis in electrical pollution, uh, what it does to people, what it does to livestock. Okay, here we go. Electrical pollution, you've not any ever heard of this. Uh, I didn't believe a lot of this. Five years ago, uh, I met a gentleman through one of my businesses, I run two businesses, and uh, I sell for BioAid at Wellesley, and they, uh, we were having trouble on dairy farms, so we ended up bringing a guy out of Wisconsin into testing these farms, and I had had these problems on my farm uh, back in 1979 and back in 90, 1991 when I built a new freestyle barn. So uh, he came in and he says, well, uh, yeah, you know, it does the cow, he realized it does the people. Uh, it doesn't do it. We're not, we don't care about people, we're worried about our cows. And he said, well, you got to realize what it does to people. Electromagnetic fields, Canada's guideline is 830 milligauss for 24 hours exposure, okay. Uh, electromagnetic fields, there's a gauze meter you use, you go under a high tower line, you get a reading. Under most high tower lines, I get a reading around say 30, okay? So you know you don't wanna build your house under that tower line, right? You're gonna get sick. But Canada's safe level is 830. So think about this, okay? When I test a house, I wanna see it under one, 0.6 to one when I test magnetic fields in a house. That's, there's different instruments I use. So when you think the government's gonna protect you, uh -huh. okay? Because when we get into dirty electricity, there is very few guidelines. There's a thing called total harmonic distortion. So anyway, but what we wanna get on to next is dirty electricity, it's number two. And the thing I'm gonna talk a lot about is 2A is electrical hypersensitivity. And that is like a peanut allergy, only you are allergic to electricity. And I have people that can't live in their homes because of this. Uh, Dr. Megan Hollis, she presented to the World Health Organization about this in uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia, in October of uh, 2004. A phenomenon where individuals experience adverse health effects while using or being in the city of devices that emanating electric, magnetic, or electromagnetic fields. It's a real and sometimes debilitating problem for the affected persons. Their exposures are generally several orders of magnitude under the limits in international accepted standards. So basically, you're saying the rules don't protect us. Uh, the electrosensitivity, I won't read all of it, but I'm going to read the last sentence because the families I was working with in the Ripley wind farm that had to move out, families I'm working with at Amaroth, that are, if one family has had to move out, these are not families that are documented, stated. Uh, and I've worked on another wind farm now. I've got three wind farms where I've documented this problem. Only three I've been called to, so I know there's more out there. But anyway, 
They include dizziness, tinnitus, pins and needles, sensation of burning, numbness, fatigue, and headaches. How many people are affected? 3% uh, of the population is severe, 35 are moderate, 35% are moderate, and 35 uh, to 50 are mild. I was, in, I was warned when I got into this business that be careful, the guy trained me, he says you will get sick because you're being called into bad homes. It's like you, you can't see this stuff because it's, uh, it's in the air. And um, he said you will develop the same symptoms of the people that you're going to all the time. If you, if you spend most of your time in, in bad homes, you're going to get the same symptoms. And because of the wind turbines, I am now sensitive. Uh, the one home I was there in the shed for uh, an hour and a half, and my ears started to you get, you get pain in front of your ears down into your knee, and your ears, it feels like the uh, pressure of the plane. And I start pushing on my ears, and the uh, husband goes, oh yeah, you're getting it. And I says, yeah, I says, I've never felt this before. Anyway, then I went to the, I went to test one of the other homes, and I was in that home for two hours, and I had the worst ear aches I'd had since I was a child. My left ear was 24 hours before it fell right. And now, when I get in a bad environment, I can tell my left ear will start to uh, pain. So, I believe these people now. I wouldn't have believed this two years ago. I've been in the business for five, but uh, I wouldn't have believed the wind turbines would make people sick this fast. Okay, third electricity. This is what uh, was affecting people at Ripley the most. There's two things, right? There's noise off the blades, plus there's high frequency no, uh, electric, uh, dirty electricity. Your electricity is supposed to be like the fine green line. What happens when you get um, harmonics, transients is what they're called, on your electricity, it starts to get fuzzy like that, and this high frequency is in the kilohertz and megahertz range, so it's like you're living inside a microwave. And these people in Ripley, they knew if they went outside, they'd be okay. They go in their house, they get this ring in their ears. And then when they lay down at night in their bed, it'd be the worst. Their, their ears would just ring, Get headaches because their head was right at the uh, wall, and that's where your wiring runs. And even the wind farm people, because the wind farm people actually hired me uh, to test. They don't like me now, but um, and that's actually why I'm speaking out. Well, I never said anything for a long time. None of us families. And we had a meeting with them uh, in October of last year, and they yelled at me for 20 minutes five big shots, and uh, when I went home that night, I swore that now it was time to speak it up. I don't care what they could do to me, uh, because somebody has to say something. You know, they, they kept saying, I kept, they, they said they did an electromagnetic field test. I said, that's totally irrelevant. That's what we're testing you for. They just they get mad. And then they go, how well, they did this fancy sound test. I said, that's totally irrelevant to what we're dealing with here. And they got mad. And because I, I kept pecking holes in their testing. One of the other sound tests was a microphone on a piece of plywood behind the house, away from the wind turbines. You have no idea what we went through. I told my children, my son's uh, an engineer, his name is Masters, my daughter's taking her Masters, an occupational therapist. I said, don't ever take a job where you have to lie to get a paycheck. As I said, I'm 30 years of business, I've never seen anything like this wind is a street of Ontario. <clears throat> I've never seen anything like that. And a lot of my colleagues are starting to see the same thing, and that's why they're here tonight, trying to educate you. 